Okay, in this tutorial, staying with the topic of lighting, we're going to look at creating some filters to create effects within your scene. So I've already set up uh, the lighting and the landscape, so this is just what I'm going to add finally to create an effect. And what I'm thinking of is a fading effect, so the sky becomes very dark just here, an effect you see in programs like Top Gear often, and also a lens flare effect created using another bright scene and then bringing it in. We'll, we'll tackle the filter first, so what I'm going to do is on the create shelf create a 2D face and if I switch to uh, number two, the overhead view and zoom in and out, I can see whether how aligned this is with the camera. So this direction, I need to move it backwards and forwards that direction, so let's see, is that going to be Z? Yes. So I'm moving it close to the camera because I don't want it to intersect the 2D uh, surface of the water. I'm going to turn it slightly, which will have the advantage of uh, making it easier to get hold of in the side view. I'll switch the side view now and zoom in on it because it's still selected, it will. Now I've turned it slightly, it's not a thin line so I can lift it up quite easily and then I'm going to tilt it over in the X direction so it's sort of facing the camera. Right, so that's my filter in front of the camera and that's what it looks like. I'm going to size it eventually to fit the entire screen but for now we'll use this and we can see what effect it's having on the background. All I'll do for now is switch to object space and scale it up a bit. If I'd uh, switched to world space and scaled it, scaled it up it would affect the angle so I'll switch back to world space for making adjustments. In the material lab for this object you can see we've got actual selection selected so we can get a pretty good idea of how it's going to look. We don't need diffuse, I'm going to put a blob in transparent colour and a blob in transparency and then holding the shift key down I'll click on the name, go into the texture library, go to basic and I'm going to use this basic altitude. So you can see this has already got things, things applied to it. Now if I go into the deep texture editor you can see the outputs currently colour and bump but what we want, no bump but alpha channel. Now if we look at the alpha channel on its own, it's going from white which will make it solid to black which will make it transparent, but the colour is sort of going in the opposite direction. So where it's transparent I want it to be coloured white, so if I hold the hold key down, click on the colour swatch, I can make that swatch white and this one can be dark blue. No it can't because that's where it's transparent, that one needs to be white also. It's a bit back to front that. Where we want it to be dark blue, we want it to be dark blue here. So I'll just select a dark blue colour there, and this colour will be the transparent colour that gets transferred to the uh, transparency when it's set up, and will tint the colour of the sky. Can you see there's a gradient set up there? If uh, if I wanted it to be uh, just a transition between two as opposed to three colours, which may or may not be helpful, you can go to Linear Interpol 2, in which case you need this colour to be the dark blue colour. But when you click on this swatch, the little selection menu covers up the swatch underneath, which is a bit inconvenient. So what you can do, you can cheat, you can copy that swatch from there to there, and then copy that one back again, so you don't have to uh, pick the colour out again. Just for example, a little tip there. So we've got uh, a transition from clear to fully opaque, plus going through colours. So we'll just, uh, well, just took blue into this case, so I'll just check out of that. And you can see we're not having any effect yet because we need to modify the texture mapping mode. So we'll set it to parametric. And now you can see a fading effect. And if you couldn't, you're going to have to look at these transformation tools. Uh, higher percentage value on the scaling here increases higher frequency, and that in turn will create a smaller transition zone. So it's compressing that transition zone. And this offset allows you to move that zone up and down. So we're aiming to be in about the top third to the about top quarter of that area for it to be taking effect so we'll have to see now how that looks in the scene so I'll just uh, check out of there and you can see now that's created quite a lot of filtering there so it's gone almost to black so if I wanted that to move up I could either scale it or I could just switch back to object space and, and, and lift the top of the filter up a little bit and that moves it back all right I'll now go to the edges hold the alt key down I can just drag these out and just carefully position it so it's covering the view. That's okay. Uh, bear in mind if you've got reflective things in your scene, sometimes they'll pick up reflections of the filters you've fitted in front of the camera. Oh, side view, here we go. So the answer to that is make the filter smaller and just cram it in closer to the point where the camera's positioned. The exact point at which these field of view 
uh, reference lines. Join is where the camera is viewing the scene from. So if you wanted you could just uh, slide this filter out and then shrink it down so it's appropriate to the size of that view at that point. A minor point really. So let's have a look how we're looking through our filter. And the next thing to tackle is going to be our effect for uh, for this like a, a starburst effect, I think a sunburst effect, so like rays shooting out from that. And for that I'm going to open a new scene and we're going to create a filter from scratch that we're going to use and it's going to be a similar uh, effect to one I've uh, produced in other tutorials like a spaceship thrust or, or, or an effect that you can burn into a HDRI but in this case we're going to set it up to look like a sunburst so we'll select our infinite plane and go to the material lab and just make it perfectly reflecting and copy and paste that and lift it up and then copy and paste that again and in the edit menu hold the shift key down and you can rotate it round to 90 degree steps and place that on the right hand side somewhere go into the material lab and turn the reflection off for that so at the moment what we've got looks like that how can that be a starburst effect well if I select the lower plane and I'm going to rotate it round just so it's pitched at an angle um, I'm pitching it up so it's uh, touching that horizon line there that's why the bit underneath the ground's disappeared we can turn the wireframe on off it just means we lose the horizon line so you can see it doesn't really matter about it going underground at the moment because this effect is created by haze so I'll select the top mirror and I'm going to rotate that round the other way and now you can see the effect we've got and if we want this to push more to one side and it'll have less splaying out we just move this plane over like that and it's sort of blanking it off on that side and the closer it gets to being in line with the camera the more is cut off in that direction if you want to create more or less starbursts you need to change the angle of the that these are meeting on and that will change the pattern of rays now I wouldn't normally recommend you doing this but we're in the perspective camera view we can use the pan tool to change our perspective without changing the well it's not changing our perspective it's actually the opposite of changing our perspective it's changing our view of the existing perspective which means we can pan that effect off to one side so it's on the left hand side so we've got more room here there's a few artifacts there that, but they'll disappear with final rendering so now I just need to sort the color of this out and maybe open up that central point there which I can do by selecting one of these mirrors and tilting it in the X axis and that'll open it out slightly so you can see there's a bit more of the sky in there but obviously that's looking a bit weird so I'll just shrink that down a little bit and then we'll go on to sorting the color out so there you go that's going to be quite a bright blob in a second I'll go into the sky and fog go into the sky lab go to atmosphere render in scene and since this is a haze causing this effect I can use color perspective to create some strong tints so if I let's see if we want uh, want it to be orange colored so well, that's pretty orange colored so I've got uh, red of 16 green of 8 so I'll check out of that and render that now so you can see how bright that central sections become probably if I turn these up a bit further so I'll keep the relationship the same so if I go for say uh, 30 15 it'll it'll make that area bright enough so we don't see any detail in that then I can widen the field of view with the field of view control you'll see how it stayed on one side so we can, we can make the effect not quite so dominating in the scene and then we'll just let that render out and save that so we'll call that uh, save as uh, sunburst effect one okay now we'll go back to our scene here and we'll take this first 2D face copy and paste it you can't have them overlapping because they'll interfere with them one another so just drag your sunburst effect forward so I've created another 2D face at the moment they've got the altitude ones on so they're adding up to be even darker but modify the material and switch this to an image texture go into the texture source editor and we'll load in you know, wherever I've hidden it the file I've just saved there we go there's our sunburst effect right now I've got that what I want to do I don't want to use transparency I don't need the transparent color I can use uh, additive here and then use the ambient effect so a 
put a blob in ambient, give it full ambient, so this is now lit by ambient, and additive means that it's not going to be casting any shadows anyway, and it will be transparent, so that's all sorted. And then the only thing left to do is to determine how much global ambient colour you want to drive the effect. So if you give it full white, the effect will be very strong, and, and the, just the final positioning really. So that's probably a bit too much, you can choose grey, and you can also use the global ambient colour to change the tint of it. So if you wanted to go to more to the red end of the spectrum, you could add more red into the global ambient colour. I think I'll just have whatever grey is available at the time, because I don't want the effect to dominate the scene too much. So I'll hold the Alt key down and I can, I can fine tune the, the luminance level there. There we go with that. And uh, so if I scale it in, so we can just see the edge of it there, you can see that if I can just get that where I want it to be there, then it'll be exactly where the light point is on the scene. So it's just a bit of a, an aligning challenge. But you have to be aware that if it's meeting the edge, then you'll want to make sure that um, it's scaled large enough so the edges don't show. Uh, as it happens, it was more or less in the right position before, but I wanted to show you that you know, if you didn't if you weren't lucky enough, I was just lucky in the way that I set this up that it turned out in the right position, then then those are the, the adjustments you have to make. So there you go. There's a fairly quick uh, rundown on how you can create two effects in Bryce, uh, either a fading effect and a sunburst effect. And depending which way you arrange these, as you can see, this sunburst effects on the inside of this fading effect. So if you were to change the order of them by moving the sunburst outside, then the fading effect would fade the sunburst as well. So you can see it's, it's faded that effect, so it's pushing more of these rays downwards, which may or may not look more suitable, uh, depending on your scene. So uh, that's not going to take too long to render. Obviously, um, setting this scene up with the effect, you can spend more time getting your rays in the correct position, and uh, and if if you've if you've widened the field of view to its fullest extent, but you still want to get more uh, rays and shrink this down, you can always you can always zoom out on the uh, on the wireframe view. You'll have to modify the pan again so we'll to put it in the position you want. But then you'll end up with an even wider field of view because it's adjusting it's adjusting uh, this scaling factor. If you go into perspective here, there's a scaling factor. So as this scaling factor goes down, so you could set it quite low manually like this, it would provide you with an extreme field of view, for example, if you needed that effect. So um, that's just a minor point there, let's see if the render's done. Oh, it's very, very nearly done. So that's the end of the tutorial, I hope you found that interesting, you'll go on to use these effects in your own scenes.